we will be going to the U.S., yes. Mm. That's what we'll be going to because we'll be t talking to the curling team uh, Nigeria and their plans for the 2020. It's going to be a big year for them because they're preparing for the Winter Olympics in you know, the 2022. They're and of course, qualify for the qualify Winter Olympics. For Winter right. Olympics. Yeah, That'll be such a big qualify. deal. Yes. It'll be as big as I mean, the bobsled not, team also. <laughs> if not bigger than the bobsled team qualifying yeah. uh, you know, for the last uh, Olympics in Pyeongchang. And, Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I'm very excited mm -hmm. and I hope, I hope they can make it. But like you said, um, we need to get updates uh, from yeah. them. They'll be telling us uh, what exactly their plans are for the city. Yeah, absolutely, because the plans are kind of huge. First of all, they'll be going to Turkey. There's a trip they've already confirmed because it's going to be in February. Yes, just mm -hmm. next month here. And, of course, there's also a trip to South Korea in March. That's also part of what they'll be doing. They'll also be going to Canada. I mean, the World Calling Federation Annual General Assembly is also there. And they've signed MOU with developed uh, countries that are you know, traditionally as uh, a nation in order to actually assist, you know, the Federation right here in Nigeria to see how they can really promote the sport. So it's going to be something really big this year because you're looking forward to a whole lot. And we'll be talking with the division director in Nigeria right here, you know, what they're expecting and what they really want to come up mm -hmm. with. And that's what we're you know, looking at. And also the fact that they will be having different clinics across uh, Nigeria this year in River State, Cross River, Abuja. You also have, you know, your Kwara and Ondo. And also they will be visiting some secondary school, uh, boys' schools and also girls' schools to actually have a foundation, lay foundation for this sport to really grow in the country. So some of these things are what we'll be discussing with the uh, division director when he joins us this morning uh, to talk about their plans for 2020. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, we can't wait yeah, to let's... actually have them. If they're ready, yeah, I mean, let's... we can just talk to them now. And they'll have to unveil to and Charles, reveal. Charles their plans. Yeah, that's the guy we'll be talking with mm -hmm. this morning. If you're ready for us, no, just unveil the plans, what they want to do, and how they intend to achieve this. We understand most times some of these uh, federation would tell us, okay, no money. Okay, I think they'll join us now uh, all the way from the U.S. Good morning. It's good to have you. Good morning and happy new year, Teo and Cecilia. Thank you for having me on. It's great to have you, uh, Charles. Uh, fantastic. Happy new year to you uh, as well. All right, let's, let's just cut to the chase. Uh, uh, Charles, you're the uh, division director of the Nigerian Curling uh, Federation. And you were in Nigeria sometime last year in March. I mean, from your trip, how would you uh, rate uh, the level of interest uh, you know, for the sports? Absolutely. I was, I was actually uh, in Nigeria three times last year. We had clinics in March and right. also in July, as you pointed out. And we've been really pleased with the uptake uh, locally. We've seen a lot of interest uh, from from the schools as well as some of the other groups like the uh, like the police. We've had great turnout with over 100 folks coming to our to the two clinics that we had uh, at uh, uh, at the National Stadium. So I think. Uh, you know, we're starting to build that foundation that we're going to need to move forward as uh, as we prepare for the Olympics in Beijing 2022. Okay, um, talking about moving forward, uh, uh, it's a new year, obviously, and I imagine, I believe, uh, you have uh, your goals already set out uh, for this year. Tell us about some of them. I think, you know, uh, when we think about our goals going into 2020, there's there's primarily three. Uh, one is to finalize that vetting and the selection for homegrown homegrown teams of Nigerian curlers. Uh, we plan to put together a men's and women's team as well as a wheelchair curling team. Secondly, we want to get those teams trained on the ice and ready for international competition. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we need to lock in the financial support that's going to be necessary to make those things happen. Uh, so those are the big three that I see as we enter the new year, Teo and Cecilia. Okay, uh, those big things. I mean, the first one, which is really key right now, is the trip to Turkey. I mean, the date has been confirmed. It's going to be 12th to 25th of February. Tell us more about the tournament. Sure. Uh, so you know, ultimately, we want to build an ice curling facility uh, in Nigeria so that we can do the training locally. Uh, but until that's complete, we're partnering with some of our uh, international um, partners uh, like 
Turkey and South Korea, those countries have agreed to make their facilities available to our athletes. So we're planning right now to put together a trip in February, as you mentioned, uh, to bring our, our teams over to Turkey uh, and uh, be on the ground there uh, on their ice with, with our staff training our teams. Okay, I mean, the trip you're going to be making, are we, are we going to be having some maybe players from Nigeria or how it's going to look like? Or is this just the professional players that will be involved in this one? Yeah, so um, we're going to bring uh, 10 or 12 athletes out to Turkey along with a number of our uh, staff from Nigeria. And myself and my son will be out there as well to, to help with, with the training. So we want to... We want to get that done in, in February and then uh, uh, raise the, the, the money necessary to do a subsequent trip to South Korea. And I think once we get the, once we get the athletes uh, through those two training sessions, they'll be ready to go into international qualifying tournaments so that we can start to earn points for our, uh, for our Olympic uh, spot in 2022. That's the plan. Uh, fantastic uh, plans uh, you've got there. Uh, Charles, uh, let's still talk about uh, the development uh, of the sport. Of course, we've created uh, awareness already. That was done all through uh, last year. And uh, we're hearing uh, you have more clinics planned uh, for 2020. Which are the states, uh, which are some of the states uh, uh, you'll be visiting this time around? Yeah, so looking at 2020, the first thing we want to do is, is to continue uh, those training efforts and get a larger network of local Nigerian teams across the country. So as you mentioned, to that end, we have additional clinics planned in five states and Abuja as well. Uh, we'll also be going to secondary schools to teach curling on their sporting days. And we have, all, we have a lot of detail on that on our webpage at nigeriacurling.com. Okay. Sounds okay. good. I mean, yeah. like um, different states, uh, to see rivers, uh, cross river, Abuja included as well. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good one because uh, when you're going to be doing this, are you going to involve the government? Because usually when you want to have a project like this, when they are not part of it, it's usually difficult to really get the real people, rather the grassroots, to be involved in this. Absolutely. You know, uh, in September, I was in Abuja uh, meeting with government officials about that kind of engagement and the long-term support we're going to need. You know, as I said earlier, one of our, our key success criteria for this year is going to be locking in that short-term financial support, as well as the longer-term sponsorships we're going to need to get this done. Uh, as you know, uh, taking the teams on the road is expensive, right? And we need help. So um, if anybody watching today on the broadcast wants to find out more about curling in Nigeria or would like to become a sponsor, again, they can go to our website, nigeriacurling.com. I think we we're going to try to put the URL up on the broadcast. And we have a GoFundMe site there uh, that's linked from our homepage. We really need the support, not only from the government, but also at a grassroots level in Nigeria. So please visit our site today. We really need the help to get our plans off the ground. Very, very, very important. All right. It is because it's a huge plan. You know, we're looking through the program you really are talking about the trip to Turkey, which you said has been confirmed. There's another one to South Korea, to Italy, to Canada. Mm -hmm. And of course, the General Assembly that's coming up is September. So this is obviously going to involve money, especially uh, yeah. in trying to qualify for the Winter Olympics. Outside the, uh, the South Korea, uh, the Turkey trip, the one of the South Korea, what's going to look like was, is just much here. Yes. So, uh, what, so those the trips to South Korea and Turkey are, are primarily for training. Uh, from there, we want to get uh, the teams inserted into qualifying tournaments. So they'll actually be competing. And there's a number of those tournaments coming up in uh, in 2020. There's several in Europe. There's a few over here in North America, and there's some in the Far East as well in Japan. So once the team's ready. Uh, to go live in these tournaments, we'll be inserting them into those uh, into those competitions. Okay. All right, fantastic, uh, Charles. Uh, before we let you go, um, a lot of people are wondering, like, what is your connection with Nigeria? You're actually Nigerian, but can you tell our viewers uh, how Nigerian you are? Absolutely. I am most definitely a Nigerian. I was born in Port Harcourt, and wow. my family's been active... My family has been active in the country for over 50 years, working to improve the welfare of all Nigerians. Uh, and as I said earlier, most recently, my son Chris and I have been in Lagos and Abuja 
three times last year working to move the, the Curling Federation program forward. So we're looking forward to staying engaged and being back in Nigeria very soon. Uh, I mean, I would say just in closing that, you know, one of our guiding beliefs is that Nigeria can be very competitive in curling on the world stage. Right. We like our chances. We like our chances with a homegrown team that's going to be drawn from this great athletic population in Nigeria. You have to remember that this is a sport traditionally dominated by small Nordic countries. So I really like our chances. Uh, I feel like Nigeria has a great legacy of sporting success, and we intend to demonstrate that once again at the Winter Olympics. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Charles uh, Nymeth, for joining us on the show uh, this morning. Really appreciate your time. That's the Division uh, Director of the Nigeria Curling Federation, Charles Nymeth.